Mushrooms. Let's talk about them. Hi, my name is MTF Print. My goal is to help you feel better about making things if you're just starting out. And I figure the perfect first actual video for that would be just to make a nice, cute little mushroom. That's actually a jar. Now, if you like content like this and you want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe because I'd like to keep doing this. But let's get into making it and I'll take you over to Fusion 360. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to want to do with any project is save it. So that way you can name it and you can find it again in case something happens like Fusion crashing or you need to switch projects for a second. And we're going to name this one Mushroom Dice Holder. Next up, immediately after saving, go to Assemble, New Component, and just make Component, make it whatever you want. I just named it Jar. We're going to start a sketch. I always like to start a sketch in the front if I can. We're going to make a center rectangle, and that's going to be the parameters of the actual jar, how big we want it, just for a scale. And we're going to use that with construction lines. We're going to draw a line straight down the center. And we're going to use that for our mirror later on. And we're going to start with the base, going with just a regular line. And we're going to make it about 40 millimeters. From there, we're going to use a tangent arc because you can make an arc, but then you'll also just have to make a tangent later. We'll just give it a nice little, nice little curve. Just right about there. And then we're going to go with a spline, but I have recently found out the center point spline is better for if you're trying to shape your end point with a spline, which is ironic. And you can see it kind of moves along with my mouse a little bit better than the fit point spline. And since this is going to be the actual jar part, you just shape it to wherever you want it to be. The top being how wide you want the mouth to be. And then you can just move around these nodes until you're relatively happy with them. We got to make this line tangent, so you just click away, hit tangency, and then some more node moving. Get it a nice little curve, and just keep going until you're happy with it. Uh, you can always change it later, and you'll get a better idea of what it looks like when you uh, revolve it and get the 3D tool going. So what we have to do is we have to make a top, and then we have to make a center line, so that way it is a completed sketch. And you'll know it's completed when it turns light blue, and you can select it. Now we just hit finish sketch. We're going to go to our revolve tool, we're going to select our profile and we're gonna select the axes being that middle line we drew. And that's gonna give us our nice little, slightly curvy pot shape. All right, now what you're gonna see me do here is a good example of knowing what you want, but not knowing what order to do it in. So I'm gonna leave it in the video. I'm making a sketch to extrude out and make the threads for the actual jar. And that is what I want to do. I'm just doing it at the wrong step. So it's okay if you mess up a little bit and do things out of order. You can always go back and change it. And again, if you're not happy with how the jar looks, you can always go back and change that. Here we're going to start on the top of the mushroom, the like shroomy part, the nice part. And to do that, we're going to grab a sketch. We're going to do a line and we're going to start at the edge of the jar. And we're going to go about 10 millimeters, just because I think that'll look nice. We're going to go and get our tangent arc, just to create a first tangency and create less work later. Give it a nice, again, little soft curve, 90 degree-ish. 
Then we're gonna go grab the center point spline again and pretty much do the same thing we did with the first side of the jar. I'm gonna create a nice little mushroom top for our mushroom top. And grab a line, remember to finish the profile so that way it's light blue. And then we're just gonna finish the sketch and do the exact same thing. We're gonna revolve it around the middle axes and make sure it's a new body. And you can see here, I realized where I messed up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and at first I thought I could edit it and then I realized I just had to delete it, which is again, fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. And sometimes you'll get a pop-up saying, hey, if you delete this, things will happen. Just delete it. So now we can go over to our body section and it'll let you see that you have two different bodies, body one and body two. And a general good rule is to rename your bodies and rename your sketches. I forget to do that all the time and it bites me in the butt. So we're gonna name the first body bottom and the second body top. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and make our threading sketch. So we're gonna make a sketch on top of the top of the jar. And we're gonna do that in case we need to readjust how big the threads are. Otherwise we would just extrude from the top of the jar. And we're gonna make that about 15 millimeters, just cause I feel like that'd be a good size. Then we're gonna shell it. What shelling does is creates walls on every direction to the thickness you specify. We're going to set that to four millimeters. Just look around, make sure it actually cut through. Next, we're going to go and select thread. We're going to select the outside of our 15 millimeter extrusion. And there's going to be two very important things. First, make sure modeled is checked. And second, make sure remember size is checked. And I go out of my way to point that out a lot. Modeled, make sure the threads actually show up in the model and remember size, make sure that the next time you do a thread, it will be the exact same parameters as your first thread. So they will line up completely. So now we got our thread, we're just gonna look a bit and we're gonna see that four millimeters wasn't quite enough for it to look right. So we're gonna just go in and edit that to six millimeters. look around a bit make sure it all looks good to you make sure it, you're happy with it because that's what's important as long as you're happy with it it's good then we're going to change over to the top of the mushroom and we're going to do the same thing we're going to extrude our sketch and we're going to make that just a little bit taller than the first uh, extrusion so we're going to make that 15.2 just to give it a little bit of an air gap because if you print it without supports, it'll sag a little bit. And then just same thing, thread. And because we clicked on remember size, it remembered the size of the thread and it's modeled and we're good. Now I had to pull up my notes here and that inadvertently led to me leaving my projects tab open. So you get to see a little bit of what I've been working on, but I have a note here about threads and that's gonna be that you offset them by at least negative 0.2 and then you fill at the edge of the thread by 0.3. Now you're gonna see me break that a little bit later on, but you have to adapt to some stuff. So to offset, you wanna select the top and bottom of the thread and then you, I just hit Q for offset and then you want to go negative 0.2. And you can see, I don't like the way that looks. And what I end up settling on is negative 0.35, just to get it that nice little, little edge look.
And you can see there's still a little bit of a face there, but that's fine. So we're gonna give it a 0.3 fillet on that face just to round it out a little bit, make it a little bit easier to print, give it a little bit more clearance when we screw the top on. Just turn it around, make sure everything looks good. A lot of turning involved in, in modeling. I spend more time looking at my models than I do modeling them. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is inspect the threads. So go to inspect section analysis and click on your Z axis plane. And you're just gonna look at those threads and make sure they line up. And generally, if one thread is taller than the other, they won't line up perfectly. So you have to rotate the part. So you're gonna go to move and copy and select your pivot point, which will be the center of your object. And you're just going to rotate it slightly and you'll see as I rotate the threads get farther and closer apart. So you just want to make sure they line up, make sure there's a good gap. You can generally tell if they're going to fit or not, um, just make sure they're not touching. After that you just go back to section analysis, do the same exact thing but in reverse because I don't know if there's a way to clear out a section analysis and it gets annoying. So if you know a way to clear that out, tell me in the comments down below. Now what's a mushroom without spots? So we're gonna make some spots. So you wanna construct offset plane, start at the bottom and just drag it all the way up above the top of your mushroom. I like to expand my offset planes. I don't know if it matters, but it makes me feel better about life. You're gonna to wanna to create a sketch on that offset plane. Create, project, and we're gonna project the top of the mushroom. And what that's going to let us do is it's going to give us the entire shape of the top of the mushroom so we know what boundaries we have to make our spots. We're just going to grab a circle and we're just going to start drawing spots. Size doesn't matter. We're going to find out a little bit later that placement does matter, but you know, freehand it until it looks good and then fix the problems later. Yeah, all that looks really good. And then we're just gonna hit finish sketch to finish it up and it should all just become a profile. Yep. So unfortunately, now you just have to select all your little circles. So the more circles you make, the more you're gonna have to select, unless you wanted to select the negative space, but I wouldn't recommend doing that for this kind of project. You just gotta zoom in, get that little guy. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the top of the mushroom. We're going to go to create and emboss. What emboss is gonna do is it's gonna create your profile on the top of generally a curve and you're gonna see it errors out and at first I'm not sure why it errored out but I had a theory that it was the circles were either too close to the center or too close to each other embossing and debossing seem like they're very finicky so I just deleted some circles I moved that one away from the center and I think that's what that fixed and you'll see that I try it again so again, you go to, you select your circles. And I got a little bit better at it, except for that one. Now we're gonna go back to create, emboss. We're gonna select our face, which is gonna be the top of our mushroom. And we're gonna select deboss, because emboss is to create on top of, deboss is to cut into. And you can see we made our little spots. And our depth's going to be negative 0.4 because I feel, I've tried it out and I feel like that's just like a good surface creator. It's not going to dig in too deep. It's going to look real nice. And as you can see, the mushroom looks like a mushroom. Now you can see I tried to mess around with the appearance a little bit. Uh, I hit A, but I'm not sure what I selected to hit A. So you'll see me fumble around with it. And again, I kept it in the video just to show you 
you can mess around with stuff and you can figure it out and you can make fun little mistakes. So you can see I turned it white a little bit before I actually figured out, all right, I need to go into the actual appearance of the model. So I just close that out. I go to modify appearance and then it'll give me all of my different colorization options and material types. And you just select the one you want and the color that you want and you just drag it over the part of the model you want. Generally, I think it goes along bodies. So I just normally select ABS because it's easy. And then I just change the color to whatever I want. And you can see as I change it to red, it will turn red because mushrooms are red. Thank you, Mario. And you just see me do it again. Once I figure out that I can't get rid of that. I'll just change that to a nice little brown because I think I remember seeing red and brown mushrooms at some point. And it's going to throw up a warning. Warning doesn't matter. And there you go. You have one completed mushroom with a screw top cap using only your revolve tool, your threading, some extrusion, and a little bit of colorization. Pretty easy project. And you can change this to whatever you want to look like. You can adjust the curves. You can adjust the mushroom. Make it however you're happy. It's always good to just double check all of your bodies. Make sure you didn't screw anything up that you can fix later. And always remember to save it afterward. And hey, I just realized I left that panel open. So now that our mushroom is complete, Let's throw it back over to IRL me where I have it completely printed and I can show it off. And there you have it. A nice jar that made in about 16 to 20 minutes, depending on how you're going. Uh, pretty good inside. Looking pretty all right. Bottom of it seems pretty good. You might want to use some supports when doing the bottom just to avoid some of these ridges. But overall, pretty clean print. And then as for the top of the mushroom, as you can see, it looks really nice with these circles at 0.4 millimeters. They're just indented enough. Printing it out, it was 0.15 millimeter layer height, so you get that nice smoothness on it. And then if you wanted to, you could use supports for the uh, bridging here, but I don't think it's necessary and you won't see it. And you know, it all just comes together pretty nice. You can use it to hold whatever you want, uh, cars, Legos, I use it for my D&D dice, and it's pretty uh, pretty neat. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this project. I had a lot of fun making it. Remember if you like something like this, like, subscribe, share, that'd be pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to put this up on printables and thingiverse, so that way if you want to print it you can do it, or if you want to make it you can do it. Yeah, pretty dope. <laughs>